All right, guys. There are about three questions that caused you massive problems, and I want to go through some of them. So the first question is this one about a beam and forces on a beam. And you are told that you've got a steel cable like that and two other cables. So the weight of the beam is 12,000 newtons. You've got to work out what the tension in the other two wires are. So this is your basic setup. You have 12 thousand newtons pulling upwards because that's the weight of the beam you've got this force which we're going to call T1 and this force that we're going to call T2 and the mistake that um, a lot of you made is you didn't realize uh, how to use cosine and sine in this because this is 53 degrees we can do Z angles and say that this angle here between the vertical and T1 is 53 degrees as well and likewise this angle becomes 37 degrees so the two, two equations that you need to solve this is to recognize horizontal components of T1 and T2 have to equal one another so that means that T1 and because it's the opposite side to the angle, then it's sine. T1 sine 53 degrees is equal to T2 sine 37 degrees. And that's the first step. The second step is to recognize that the vertical force of 1, uh, uh, 12,000 newtons is going to be balanced out by two vertical forces pulling downwards of T1 and T2 and that means you get the equations um, going upwards 1, 2, 0, 0, 0 is equal to the vertical force of T1 pulling up and that's going to be the adjacent side to this so it's T1 cosine 53 degrees plus T2 cosine 37 degrees. So you can't solve this equation because there are two unknowns and you can't solve this equation because there are two unknowns but all you then need to do is recognize that with this equation you can rearrange it so you get um, T2 is equal to T1 sine 53 degrees divided by sine 37 degrees and we can substitute that into here we can substitute that right in and I'm not going to do it for you you can do it yourselves but I'll start you off you've got 1 2 0 0 0 equals T1 cos 53 degrees plus and now instead of T2 we write all of that T1 sine 53 degrees divided by sine 37 degrees multiplied by cosine 37 degrees now you can put those in brackets or whatever it doesn't really matter but ultimately that's an equation with just one unknown and everything else is numbers and that means that you can get t1 you substitute in t1 into any of the other equations and you'll get t2 that's how you're meant to solve this vertical forces must counteract and horizontal forces must counteract because it tells you at the beginning the beam is stationary and in equilibrium so we know there is zero Newton resultant force all the forces must be balanced this is just resolving forces All right question 5.3 was another question where some of you struggled so I'm trying to go through slowly to answer this question um, I want to point out a few things about this so question 5.3 is about a cube of water with an iron nail inside it sorry a cube of ice with an iron nail inside it and the question tells you a few things about this it says that the volume of this cube is exactly equal to um, 4 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed it also says to you the mass of the water displaced is 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms and you know from the previous question where it says the weight of the water 
is equal to the weight of the ice cube, the weight of the water displaced is equal to the weight of the ice cube. So the mass of the water displaced is equal to the mass of the ice cube. The mass of the water displaced is that, that's equal to the mass of the cube. The mass of the cube is 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. It tells you a few other things as well. Throughout the question are scattered um, these values. The density of the ice is 920 kilograms meters cubed per meter cubed. Density of the water, which you don't actually need, but I'll write it down anyway, is 1,000. And the density of iron, 7,800. Now, this is a tricky question. You have to work out what the volume of that nail is. So in order to work that out, we need to remember the fundamental equation for density, which is just density is mass over volume. So the density of the nail is going to be equal to the mass of the nail divided by the volume of the nail. The density of the ice is going to equal the mass of the ice divided by the volume of the ice. We do have the density of iron, and we do have the density of the ice, but we don't have the mass of the nail or the volume of the nail, and we don't have the mass of the ice or the volume of the ice. We need to work out the volume of the nail. So we've got four things that seem to be unknowns, and this is a question that some of you just didn't even bother trying because it looked a bit scary. It's not scary. It's not too hard. If you realize that from this equation, the mass of everything is density times volume, then let's, let's just break down a few things. That the mass of this whole thing is 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's going to equal the, the mass of the ice plus the, the mass of the nail. So we could write down the mass of the ice as the density times volume of the ice, and the mass of the nail is density times volume of the nail. So that whole equation becomes 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to 920 times V ice plus 7,800 times V of the nail. Two unknowns. There's a pattern here. This happened before. This happened in this question. There were two unknowns. But there's another equation that will help us out. We know that the volume of the whole thing is 4 times 10 to the minus 6. 4 times 10 to the minus 6 is the volume of the whole thing. Well, the whole thing is V ice plus V now. We have two equations here, two completely different equations with um, two unknowns. We use simultaneous equations. We've got this sorted. We just substitute in. So I'll start it off for you and then you can, you can finish it off. So the V ice is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 6 take away V now. So we can substitute in V ice into this equation and then we get 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to 920 multiplied by the V ice which we're going to just put in as 4 times 10 to the minus 6 take away V now. Then we add that to 700, 7,800 V now. Sorry if you can't really read that, but we just have one unknown. Um, and that's the volume of the noun, which is great because that's exactly what we need to find out. Um, I'll let you see if you can work that out yourselves. Um, I think the answer is around about. Actually, I'll give you the answer for it so you can see if you can get to the same answer as I got. I got 3.2 times 10 to the minus 8 and, and yes 3.2 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms cool and what other question did you guys struggle with there was another question here 
This one, we'll just quickly have a look at it. Um, well, with this question, you have to work out which two lamps are at the normal brightness. And you've got this uh, little circuit here. And I think everyone got this wrong. So I'm just going to go through how this works. Voltage and power. So two equations you know from GCSE is V equals IR, P equals IV. And we can substitute these into one another to get that I is V over R. So P is actually equal to V squared over R. That's really useful because you can rearrange this to find that the resistance of something is equal to the velocity squared over power. So if this is the normal voltage, operating voltage, and this is the normal power, with this equation we can work out what the resistance of these things are. V squared and P gives you the resistance values of 6 times 6 divided by 6 is 6. And that's 6 ohms. You don't need a calculator for that. V squared over P for the next one, 3.5 squared divided by 4.1 equals 2.987. It's very close to 3 ohms. I'm just going to write down 3 ohms. Because it's really close to it. Well, that means that the resistance of A and C are 6 and 6, and the resistance of B and D are 3 and 3. Now we know that in any series component, or any, power, any, any one of these branches, the voltage is shared. So 9 volts has to be shared equally um, between every ohm. So 6 ohms here and 3 ohms here. So of those 9 volts, 6 volts go through here and 3 volts go through there. Um, of these 9 volts, 6 volts go through here and 3 volts go through here. So this is going to be 6 volts here, 3 volts here, 6 volts here, 3 volts here. Well, let's have a look. Um, normally, if they have those resistances and that's the, power you're that's the battery that you're supplying, 6 volts means that A and C are going to light up. But 3 volts is lower than 3.5 volts, so B and D will not light up. There you go. The calculations, by the way, are for calculations for resistance. And potential divider, yeah, you could do that, but it's so easy because that's 9 volts. So you've got to divide 9 by 9, which is 1, and so every ohm gets 1 volt. It's not really that hard. Um, once you get to the resistance bit, it's not that hard. So. That's the hard bit, working out the resistance is V squared over P, then everything else is easy. Um, this one here, just really quickly, for this one, if you put anything over this branch, 6 volts have been used up there, 6 volts have been used up there, there is no potential difference between this point and this point. And no potential difference is, is a bit like saying there's no reason why the electrons would want to go from this side to this side or from this side to this side. There's nothing pushing them. So I don't, it doesn't matter what you put in here. You could put something that's very, very low resistance in here and there'll be no reason for the electrons to want to move. So whatever happens here, whatever you put in here isn't going to light up, it isn't going to take any current. Um, so if it doesn't take any current, then it does, these don't change. So A and C and B and D stay exactly the same brightness. Whatever you put there doesn't change. Nothing at all. That one will. Lamp B in figure 7 fails so it no longer conducts. It doesn't affect the resistance of the other lamp. So let's have a look at this situation. We've got lamp A, C, E, B and then D. I'm just going to do that for our symbols. And we know something about, whoops, made a little mistake here. Oh, no, I didn't. It's okay. So we know A and C are 6 ohms, 6 ohms. It says E is the same as that one. That's 6 ohms. This is 3 ohms, and this is 3 ohms. Sorry. Yeah, it is 3 ohms. 
So if you want to work out the effect of current, the only thing that affects current is the voltage that does not change in this experiment and resistance. So you need to think about resistance. Lamp B stops working. Well, before lamp B stops working, let's just let's quickly work out what the, the, the resistance is here. So that's 6 plus 3, 9 ohms at the top branch, 9 ohms at this branch. Remember, there's no current going through here, so it doesn't have an impact. 9 ohms, 9 ohms. In parallel, the total resistance is halved, 4.5 ohms. So what happens if, if B is out of action? Well, if, if B is out of action, then this whole thing changes. Because um, at this point here, the current has to go down through there and along. So I'm going to kind of redraw this because it looks like A and E are on one side of a parallel branch with C. So it's actually A and E are kind of in series together, but in a parallel branch to C. And then all the current has to go through D. So that's kind of on, it, on, its, on its own. So this is 6 and 6 and 6 and 3. And that top branch is then going to be 12 ohms at the top, 6 ohms at the bottom. So you've got 12 ohms of resistance and 6 ohms of resistance followed by another 3 ohms of resistance. So, R, sorry, 1 over RT in parallel is 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. And 1 over RT is equal to, well, um, 1 over 6 is 2 over 12. So that's going to be 3 over 12 when you add it all together. So, RT is equal to 12 over 3, which is equal to 4 ohms. That whole thing is 4 ohms, that's 3 ohms, and that means that R is then, for this new configuration without B, it's going to be 4 plus 3 is 7 ohms. So there's less resistance to start, which means there's more current. There's more resistance later, so that means there's less current. How um, what, what is the effect of the current on the battery? The current is decreased because the resistance is increased. And you need to have some numbers in here to get them up. Um, and that's pretty much it. The rest we'll go through in class. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening.